Hi, my name is Fred Evers, and I am here presenting my final project from uh, Harvard Extension School's Big Data Analytics class from the spring of 2015. My topic is storm event uh, stream processing, um, and uh, I would like to show you how it operates, what options are available, um, walk through a little bit of a project, and show you the primary characteristics of the application. STORM is a, an open source project uh, that today is available uh, on Apache.org. Um, it was originally created by Nathan Martz and others at a company named Backtype um, in about 2010, and it was acquired by Twitter in 2011. It became an open source project in 2014. STORM is a framework for processing streaming data. Um, it accepts an input stream and orchestrates in-memory processing. It distributes its workload on multiple compute uh, clusters, and uh, the, a storm job runs continuously until it is terminated. Storm is valuable for parsing live data and extracting from that massive amount of data what is of interest. At the end of storm's processing chain, um, the results must go into some kind of a persistent store, uh, which is external to STORM for analysis. STORM works by having a developer create a program, which is called a typology. In general, a typology is a description or classification of certain types of things according to their primary characteristics. In STORM, a typology defines the set of components which will process the data as well as the flow that the data will undergo during the course of its uh, transformation. Uh, the typology uh, is deployed into the compute cloud and a stream of data is fed into it. The components each perform a task and send results on to the next component in the chained stream of tasks. So the benefits of STORM is that it's very fast. STORM processing is done in memory. Um, it uses uh, Zookeeper as a resource negotiator, and uh, that makes it fault tolerant. Um, it is capable of determining when a node fails or when an aspect of a processing job fails. It can communicate that information back to the Zookeeper um, uh, negotiator and uh, will requeue the job so that the, any uh, bit of information that was missed can be uh, reprocessed. Um, it uh, also allows for multi-language support. There are deployments and uh, APIs for Java, PHP, and uh, it's possible to integrate um, Python scripts into it and have Python run uh, part of the processing. Uh, it's kind of a mix and match arrangement. So it's very, very flexible. Um, it's also fairly simple and easy to understand, uh, to use, and to deploy. Some use cases for STORM are that it, you could use it for a weather monitoring application uh, where you collect data in real time, fraud detection, credit card uh, charges flowing through uh, computers in real time, um, data mining on live text, traffic monitoring, uh, other kind of data intensive devices which will be arising with Internet of Things and are already there with aircraft and so on. Um, among the cons, I would say that uh, STORM is just one piece of the big data environment. Um, it is exclusively used for in-memory processing of streaming data. It has no persistence of any kind. It has no built-in analytics. Um, it has no built-in uh, visualization. Uh, applications. So anything along those lines that has to be done, you have to take the, you know, get your data out of STORM, write it into some kind of a database, uh, and then do your an analytics and visualization based on that output from STORM. STORM uses a, you know, fairly common master-slave uh, organization. Um, a master in STORM is called the Nimbus and um, the work of uh, the slave is called a supervisor. Um, as I said, the resource negotiator is uh, Apache Zookeeper, 
um, and Zookeeper keeps track of what jobs have been distributed. It, it handles the distribution of the data across the cluster, um, makes sure that uh, all of the data completion, you know, processing completion has been uh, done effectively and communicated back to the master node. Um, and if there's a failure, it will uh, indicate that that has happened and restart the job again. Um, if the Nimbus fails, the ma you know, the master node fails, uh, the job can continue to run because all of the information related to it is maintained in the Zookeeper cluster. Um, to develop a storm uh, job, one has to create a, a typology. A t in Java, as my uh, example uses, um, a typology uh, is configured uh, in the main method. Basically, a typology is a group of objects which are assembled, defined in uh, the main method of a class. Uh, in the little snippet example I have here, um, you can see I have given my class uh, an arbitrary name. I simply called it typology. In the main method of that class, um, I have instantiated an object called a typology builder. Uh, that typology builder has a number of methods, most importantly, set spout and set bolt. Spouts and bolts are the primary tasks of a uh, storm typology. Um, and I will describe what each does. But as you can see here, there is a group of uh, objects created. Um, I have a, in my set spout method, uh, I have instantiated a new spout, uh, which is called new Vitz Twitter spout. Um, and next to that, in the blue text, I have given the name tweet loader to that class. Um, and it is set inside of the builder with the set spout method. Um, next down the line there, you see uh, that I have set a bolt. The bolt in this instance is a new instance of English bolt. Um, I have called it English in the blue highlighted name association. And as you can also see, I have assigned a replication factor uh, to this particular bolt. So that means each time um, this typology is deployed and run, um, as it uh, is deployed on the cluster uh, for each instance of this uh, job, you know, this typology, there will be three uh, instances of uh, the English bolt on each shard. Um, same number applies to the next bolt, which is an instance of text getter bolt that I have named text only. Um, a typology in general is understood as a directed acyclic graph, uh, also known as a DAG. A DAG consists of vertices, usually called nodes, um, and uh, edges, which we usually refer to as flows. Um, in Storm, the vertices are called tasks, and uh, there are two types of tasks. Tasks um, receive data input and emit streams as data output. Um, the two types of tasks are called spouts and bolts, um, each of which takes an input of data and emits output after some kind of a transformation. Uh, in Storm, the edges of the DAG are called streams, uh, and it is and this, these streams are the communication uh, vehicles between the different um, tasks. So to create a spout, uh, the spout is where the primary uh, input of the data coming into your typology uh, is located. Um, the, the data comes into your spout uh, and it uh, runs through whatever uh, you know processing job you define inside of your um, inside of your spout. Um, I have shown you here on screen three methods that are part of uh, the spout class. Um, one is called open, uh, and the open method is used primarily for initializing properties. Um, the one I have here simply states that. It doesn't actually initialize or show the initialization of any properties. But um, if you look at the project that I have uploaded with my 
uh, project, uh, you will see that uh, I initialize a number of properties and objects inside of my open method. The next and most important method for a spout is called next tuple. The data streams that flow between the tasks in Storm um, are all in the form of a tuple. If you recall, a tuple is a relation. They are primarily made up of two components. One is a name and the other is the value. Um, and the coupling of these two uh, data types uh, creates a tuple. Tuples are what flow uh, as the data between the tasks in a storm typology. As you can see in my sample next tuple method here on screen, um, this one doesn't do very much. It just sends a poll to the queue, which is defined somewhere else, um, and it, it waits to receive data. If there is data there, um, it emits it, uh, simply sending it along. Uh, there is no transformation being done in this instance. This is just a polling um, uh, module and you see that it waits for 50 milliseconds and then it goes back uh, to the queue and polls again to uh, see if there's more data and if there is it emits it. Um, down below the third method in this slide is called declare output fields. Um, this method is used to give a name to the output stream so that the emitted value uh, the emitted tuple would have the name tweet and it would have the value of whatever uh, was pulled off of that uh, input stream uh, when the poll came back successfully. The other important type of uh, task in Apache Storm is a bolt. A bolt is really the workhorse of Storm. Um, it is a processing task. It receives uh, data from an input stream and it performs some work on that input stream. When it has completed that work, it emits uh, a new value. So in my little code snippet here, you see the execute method, um, which is the area where the work is done. This method receives a tuple, uh, which as you saw, can be emitted by uh, a spout. And uh, it performs some work on that. And after it has completed that work, it emits uh, another tuple in the form of a new value. Down below the execute method, you see the same method you saw in the spout previously. It's the declare output fields method. And here I can assign a name, which will be the name which will be associated with the output tuple. So when this particular bolt uh, emits its new value, it will emit a, a tuple, the name of which will be output stream name in this case, and the value will be the data that has been uh, processed by this bolt and then uh, emitted as a form, you know, in a new form, transformed. Um, bolts can be chained together, and we see them um, moved through the cluster or moved through the typology. And um, through by chaining together a sequence of bolts, um, we complete our in-memory data processing. So this slide demonstrates or shows how a typology is deployed in Storm. Um, there are two ways you can deploy. You can run it locally, or you can run it in distributed mode. Now, of course, uh, the ultimate goal of running a typology is to have it operating on a cluster where data is continually streamed in and processed and ultimately uh, saved to uh, some kind of a data store for analysis. But for development, you can deploy this as a local uh, application. So the text here, the example of part showing how you deploy it locally is given uh, here in the highlighted area. And um, you can deploy this in local mode using Eclipse. Uh, you simply go to your project, uh, right click, select Run As, and then when you get Run As or Debug As, you select Java Application, and it will deploy your uh, application, your typology, into memory uh, in lo running locally on your machine. Um, the output from that deployment is shown here in the Eclipse console, where in this case you can see some Twitter 
uh, tweets uh, displayed as they run through my typology and work their way through the chain series of bolts that I have designed in my typology. And if you would like, you can download my application and you can look at all of the code and see how this works. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.